Bună ziua! Bine ați venit! Well, the book I'd like to talk about on Books in Isolation uh, this morning is uh, a novel by an author I've already covered, uh, François Mauriac, and uh, I talked about his earlier book, Thérèse d'Esquerou. Um, he's a, uh, a psychological novelist exploring the psychologies of his, his characters. But as Mauriac himself said, uh, Je suis comme une truite qui remonte toujours le même ruisseau. He's continually going over the same ground, ground on which he feels comfortable. Um, and that is uh, regional. Uh, his novels are set in the area around Bordeaux, uh, between Bordeaux and the, the sea, uh, Les Landes. His dates are 1885 to 1970, and he won the Nobel Prize in 1952. Um, he's sometimes described as a Catholic novelist. Well, he's a Catholic writing novels rather than a Catholic novelist, I think, uh, although religion does play a part in the background of his books. So the book we're going to look at today is this book, Le Nœud de Vipère, translated as The Nest of Vipers. <clears throat> and uh, the particular phrase, Le Nœud de Vipère, is referenced three times in the novel. It's an epistolary novel. Um, which changes uh, part of the way through. Um, the usual themes of uh, Mauriac come up. Uh, a bourgeois family, uh, an obsession with money, status, honour. So he satirises the middle classes. He analyses passion and ultimately tragedy uh, intrudes into into the novel. Um, it was written uh, four years after Thérèse d'Esquerou, Thérèse d'Esquerou, 1927. This was written in 31. And uh, the main character is an advocate, uh, a barrister called Louis, um, who is an old man uh, living out his final days in his uh, house, uh, which is also inhabited by other members of his family. Um, as with Thérèse, we can see Louis as a villain and a victim. Um, the book starts with a letter, a letter that Louis is writing to his wife, Isa. Um, and it's a letter explaining the breakdown of their relationship and why he doesn't he doesn't love her and why he's not going to leave his money to their children. Um, if you like, uh, Mauriac is the, the novelist of man's misery. But there is always the possibility of grace, uh, salvation. And I think in this, in this novel, the final <coughs> letter by his uh, granddaughter Janine, uh, hints at salvation and redemption for Louis at the end of the novel, the sinner being granted grace. And he certainly changes he in his last days. He's, uh, as I said, a successful <clears throat> barrister who had a, an extraordinary success in a famous case, uh, L'Affaire uh, Villeneuve, where he defends a woman who takes the blame for a crime committed by another member of her family and he defends her to brilliant plaudits. But his family ignore his success. Uh, he, he never feels he is recognised for his um, success in the, in the law by, by anyone in his family. Um, he's very much a solitary figure. He says, uh, j'ai toujours été un solitaire. And he talks about l'air du grand silence with his wife, Isa. There is no communication. They sleep in separate rooms. She says rather movingly uh, later in the novel <clears throat> that she would never allow the children into her room to sleep with her or in, to sleep in her room 
uh, because she always hoped forlornly that Louis would visit her at night, but he doesn't. What he does is he stays in his room on the first floor and listens to his family plotting to disinherit him, if you like. Um, he can hear them downstairs <clears throat> and he can hear them as they are out in the garden because he has the shutters uh, half closed to his room but he can still hear everything that's that's going on. Um, uh, he is motivated by avarice and hatred. He has an extraordinary uh, amount of, of uh, money. He's, he's extremely wealthy. Even his family don't know how wealthy he is. And he <clears throat> is determined to disinherit them. Firstly, by trying to give money to uh, his his nephew, Luke. But tragically, Luke is, is killed in the First World War. Uh, what Louis does give him is a, a belt with um, golden coins. <laughs> and um, this, this, of course, is, is of no use, no, no use to Luke uh, as he's killed in the trenches. He's had affairs throughout uh, the marriage. And from one of these affairs is born uh, a, a son who lives in Paris uh, and uh, called uh, Robert. And he plans to give his money to this illegitimate son, but this plan comes to comes to nothing, and I, I'll let you find out why. Um, there are some wonderful set pieces: uh, the defence of Madame Villeneuve, um, the image of him going out into the into his vines to protect them from hailstorms with his body uh, is, is, is an extraordinary um, image of, I suppose, of his avarice, avare. When he goes to Paris, he prefers to stay in a simple pension de, de famille and chooses the set menu. He doesn't, uh, he doesn't like spending his money. Um, his children don't seem to love him. Um, neither does his wife. What caused the breakdown in the relationship with Isa? Well, Isa is from a much uh, higher class family. Uh, Louis is originally from peasant stock. Uh, his mother is very careful at uh, investing their money and uh, looking after their inheritance from, from his father. Um, and Louis is, is, is in a sense a spoilt a spoilt child who doesn't have a particularly close relationship with his mother. Um, he has his own floor on their uh, in their house at a very very early age, um, but feels a sense of social inferiority vis-à-vis uh, -vis his his wife Isa Isa Fondodej. Um His mother is. Uh, critical of his decision to, to, to marry Issa. Um, the Fondodej family are delighted to marry in, into, into money because they have the name but they don't have they don't have the money. Um, one night in bed with Issa she confesses to him that she had been um, engaged before they met uh, significantly to a, a man called Rodolphe reminiscent of Madame Bovary and we had a lot of references to Madame Bovary and Thérèse Desquerou. Um, he is beset by jealousy and can never really forgive her um, for, for this confession because it's clear that she still harbours some feelings for this chap, Rodolphe. Isa is very difficult to marry off um, because she has two brothers who were physique they died of tuberculosis and this is an absolute no-no and we all remember a character in Therese Desquerou um, who is, is suspected of being physique. This is not a good, not a good thing uh, for the genes of the family. Um, well I suppose the tragedy for Louis is that Isa, his wife, for whom the letter is destined, dies before him. So he then 
turns the letter into a diary and he changes um having initially intended to disinherit his children his family he um makes over the entirety of his wealth to them and uh uh, gives uh, a sum, uh, an income to his illegitimate, illegitimate son as well. Perhaps he comes closer to one of his uh, family, Janine, who seems to understand him uh, as she writes the letter, which concludes the the book. There's an exchange between the the, uh, the two children and Janine, and she writes, "La." Où était son trésor? La n'était pas son cœur. So ultimately, he is redeemed um, because there is something deeper to him than just acquisition of uh, assets and m money. Um, it's a it's a terrific read. Um, initially, I, I I wasn't I wasn't particularly taken with Moriac as a as an author because the, the themes are set out fairly clearly. The background of Les Landes, it's all about pines, vines and sand, effectively. But there is a telling um, acuity to his psychological portrayals, and I think it, it, it certainly bears, uh, bears reading. Um, I think having read a couple of uh, novels by Moriac. That's that's probably enough because you're not going to find too many different themes in 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 his other works. But, uh, I can certainly recommend it, uh, Le Nœud de Vipère, and uh, I hope you enjoy it. It's told in a, a series of, of, of flashbacks as well, as is Thérèse Desquerous. So it's similar um, uh, narrative uh, technique there. Okay. So I, I hope um, if you've read it, that I've shed some light on the, the novel for you. Um, and if you haven't read it, maybe you'll consider giving it a go. Thank you very much for watching. See you next time.